All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Happy weekend. And Connor, thanks for joining us again as well. Thank you, Scotty. How are you? I'm well, guys. We're bringing you, uh, for us, it's Sunday morning. So I hope everyone's having a, a good weekend so far. And your week was good too. Uh, we're into February now. Time's flying. So Connor, just quickly, Euro Swiss, for the people who've been following uh, the videos, um, it was looking... In a downtrend, it's popped up frustratingly um, with the euro just sort of doing its erratic stuff that it, that it does when you don't yeah. want it to. So um, was to stop. That was at that was always at the original two percent. Yeah, always. Well, okay, at, at, okay, at, yeah, at yeah. Look, I mean that's uh, yeah, and we've discussed how to approach things, guys, with expectations and make sure the stop is you know kept in the same spot. You don't move it away. If you ever you move it closer to the entry price, if it meets you know your rules, don't try and. I think a lot of people do that. They manipulate the stop when it's moving against them, and then that can turn really pretty bad. So that's a good lesson in discipline, guys. You don't want to do that because that's how you really sort of blow accounts up. So that's Euro Swiss. Um, now I'll bring the USD cat up because we were sort of discussing that as a because I'm actually watching that as well as um, as a potential sell trade. So it's obviously been running up. It's had a bit of a sell-off, had a rally. So where were you, ideally, what would you like to see, Connor, for you to sort of trade this potentially? Yeah, it would have to have another push downwards, like another yep. sort of break, because I've missed the um, original sort of box now. Yeah, so it would have to go sideways again and go down again. And then that would... Uh, consolidate quite a good trend because it's got the three pushes downwards. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, you're all right. This one. So that's looking like it may want to go down further. Yeah, just, you're right. Yeah. It's just difficult with whichever time of the day you want to trade. Um, yeah, if, if you get a breakout, you know, during the time where you're sleeping or if you're at yeah, work or true. going for a run or whatever, sometimes you just have to miss the trade. Yes. Um, yeah. Because then it really changes. If you get yeah. in later, everything is off. You're not really in the right. <laughs> I've been there, yeah, and you're like, oh, I really shouldn't have done this. This is just, you're right, exactly. So, guys, that's probably a good take-home message there. Like, if you are, and a lot of viewers, obviously, that watch this probably are doing other stuff. They're not just in a position to watch the charts all the time. You miss the entry. Really don't chase because it's totally different now the whole trade plan it's uh because you might have your stop where it would have been if the if the trade was taken where you should have taken it so that's all off now so really don't don't be doing that that sort of turns into a bit of a, a, a high gambling sort of move which uh shouldn't really be doing in forex it's not the best idea now we talked usd cad um what i'll do now is I've got the Aussie up here as well. So this has been, this was unexpected. So I took this trade, um, I'll bring the daily up. The daily sort of, that engulfing bearish, uh, bullish candle was like, yeah, that's that, that uh, took my interest. And that closed at um, like 71.80. And I was like, okay, I missed that. I didn't actually see it close. And then um, it sort of faded back a little bit and then it had a tiny little like kangaroo tail. And then I saw the daily again and the candle was really, it was pretty good, it was engulfing. So I'm like, I'm gonna take that. And it sort of shot off. I, it was probably data or something, you know, something happened. I was like, okay, finally that's, you know, that's worked out. Um, but we'll see. Cause it moves, so when it moves like that, um, there's a tendency for a small pullback and it sort of happened, but we'll uh, see. Cause I'm also in gold long as well. Um, so those two are sort of a little bit correlated. And uh, I'm not sure where that... Okay, so it closed at 17.90 on my chart. So is gold interesting you at all with, with how it's boxed up like that on the... Um, not particularly. It's going... I mean, it's going great. It's going upwards. But I just have to find... Yeah, I just have to find it to... Um, it's a little different gold as well, like we've yeah, discussed with I mean the. the, the I mean, the move upwards was great, but there's still quite a bit of wick on that candle. And as you can see, because the, the breakout had a bit of a wick on it, now the candles next to it have been quite wicky. If we were yeah. to have another breakout, uh, this is on the four hour, and, and close at the top of the candle, 
yep. then it could uh, potentially go up. As I said, like if you look on to the monthly, yeah. uh, it's starting to get up to that like range that it's been in, which is around about the 1400 area. Yeah, yeah. So it's still got a way to go if you want to trade it on uh, on yeah. a on a um if you want to trade it on a four hour yeah, chart. Yeah. But you've always got to be careful with gold. The stop seat, uh, you know, the, the spreads are big, it's yes. volatile. Yeah. Uh, you got to. You got to. <laughs> the spreads can widen. You're like, yeah. what is going on here? I was like, gee. <laughs> <laughs> that's true and if you've got the stop at a normal spot where you would have with FX that's a good point you need to consider guys so point of interest but like kind of said I think we've discussed this before you brought up the 1400 that's a um, bigger point of interest than right now because right now it could just float around like it's been doing in the in the monthly sort of time frame if you look at that that gives you a bit of context you can clearly mm. see that uh, it's looking good on the, the four hour for a strong uptrend, but in the monthly context, it's still sort of not that great from a perspective of it's been here before. Now, I haven't seen so I just want to see what Silver's doing. Just as a bit of a conversation point here as well. Because um, it's always interesting to sort of look at it. And you, you're holding physical silver as well, kind of, so, which is yeah. a whole different ballpark though, guys. So we've discussed... Um, we've discussed this before as well in regards to why, you know, the physical commodity is a lot different then. Is it a three to one ratio or is it more than that? For oh, it's like 65. It's, it's around about the 51 ratio between oh. gold, gold and silver or something yeah, at the yeah, moment. That, yeah. um, and, and, and silver, silver is a smaller market than gold. It seems to react as if it's on some sort of... Uh, Metabolite, some sort of steroid or something like it. It just goes up when so when gold goes up. Normally, yeah, you, yeah. you know, within a within a not too long period, silver will react. Yeah, so, yeah you're right. Yeah, mm. more volatile um, silver. Yeah, I was going to say it is. Yeah, so the pullbacks are more severe, and uh, yeah, so I guess if you're brave enough, guys, you can sort of. But to me, like kind of <clears throat> just said. It's, um, no. And on the weekly chart, look at that. I mean, that's really, it's moving up to some strong resistance. So I would say it's not, it's just not worth it to deal with all that. That's, um, no, 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 no. All right. So that was, we've discussed USDCAD as well. Um, the euro probably wasn't worth even talking about, was nah. it? So that, I know a lot of people, like you guys love trading the euro, but right now it's just not, it's not good at all so that's it's just too much of a dice roll we might go to the pound because we were talking about the pound yeah um there's no real trade here at all for you like what would you have to see where it is on the daily on the daily is it there's nothing really what's well, it's interesting how it's been moving higher even with all the um the brexit you know talk yeah 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 it is odd um just goes to show uh, the fundamentals don't often follow what's actually going on in the market. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm just not. I'm not just not interested in trading it at the moment. It doesn't sit, fit any of my criteria. No, no, I'm the same. Um, it's um, no, because it hasn't broken out properly. Because I was looking at, uh, I needed it to really, you know, do more, and it hasn't. I'm like, well, yeah, it's sort of, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay. Yeah, away. I'm just gonna skip, skip it, and stay away. That's right. That's right. So, look, guys. Yeah, and again, if you have any questions or there are certain charts that you want, you know, us to talk about and all of this stuff, um, feel free to go through the other videos. But yeah, that's. Is there anything else in closing, Connie? You wanna? No, no, that's a lot. Yeah. Yep. So, guys, again, be picky. Good risk management. And um, just be careful. Don't just sort of jump into trades when you've missed the right entry is probably the take-homes here. So, again, kind of thank you for joining us as well. Thank you, Scotty. Thanks for having me. And we'll be back next week, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.